Spanish main, one time haunt of buccaneer and pirate. Their prey, the Spanish galleons laden with Aztec and Inca treasure. And legends of loot buried on a former pirate stronghold under the Jolly Roger. A fortune in pearls buried by Captain Kidd, whose self caricature and signature authenticate a map which prompted a cruise that caused the young skipper to stand before a maritime board of inquiry. Captain Parker, you have petitioned this board for a hearing to justify your right to be reinstated as a captain of seagoing vessels. Now, first of all, I want you to understand that the rule of this board is to be fair, impartial, and unprejudiced. Mr. Parker, you were the captain of the Black Rover, a 3,000-ton sailing vessel. This ship was lost under very mysterious conditions. Your first mate, Fred Winthrop, returned the following year, and his testimony places all the blame upon you. The disaster, he said, is the result of your inexperience. Well, Mr. Chairman, it was rather due to circumstances beyond my control. But before we go into that, I, I would like to go back to the events preceding the sailing of the Black Rover. You see, I was in love with a girl. We were going to be married after I returned from my first command. But before I took command of the Black Rover, it had just returned to port on a peculiar circumstance. Listen, sailor, I'm glad the skipper put about. As soon as we hit the dock, I'm leaving. Stand by your hands, Mr. Calvert. Stand by the ship, Harriet. Let's go! Steady your helm. Aye, aye, sir. Steady your helm. Mr. Talbot, stand by your ship, Harriet. Stand by your ship, Harriet. Hey, where are you going? Sure, sir. The old man gave us ten days' leave. Yeah, until I fix this leaky old ship. Oh, yeah? Mate. Aye, sir. Come here. Well, none of you are going ashore. Major Captain, bring him here. Aye, sir. Did you get uh, that machinery aboard at Fairhaven? No, sir. I didn't have a turn before I got there. I've got to get that cargo to Santino. You understand? It can be done, Mr. Winter. The ship needs repairs. Then cock up the seams and sail with the night's tide. Get another skipper. Grant it. And I'll trouble you for the ship's papers. What goes for the skipper goes for me. I won't sail in your old coffin. Furthermore, I'll have the law on you. <laughs> so you speak of the law, huh? You'll bring the law down on me, huh? I'm the law here, you scum. And I want you to know that that is my war. And this is my ship. I give you your daily bread. And if you don't like it, you can all clear up. He's pumping the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Now go on, get out of here. Every one of you. Go on. Clear up. I'll trouble you for your papers, Captain. Very well, Mr. Winter. Mr. Galvin. Aye, sir. I want you to go ashore and pick me out a crew. Aye, sir. 
crew that's good and tough. You leave that to me, sir. Tell me you lost your crew. I'm not worried about the crew. I'm worried about trying to find another captain. Dad, I got the very man for you. Who? Jim Parker. He just got his captain's papers. He has? Yes. Oh, I'm afraid he's too much like his father. Too straight-laced. He'd never stand handling this ship. Don't you worry about that. Why, he'd be so glad to get a command that he'd never question his cargo. He would? Of course he would. And besides, I could go along as mate. And between Calvert and myself, I guess we could control him all right. Hmm. Good. I wonder what he'll say. When he finds out that there was counterband aboard. Well, in that case, we could have a little accident at sea. What's the matter, Fred? I thought you liked Parker. In that case, I'll offer him the command. Well, you see my dad? How about it? Congratulations, Jim. I mean, Captain. I certainly got a lot to thank you for, Fred. Now, don't you worry a bit about that. Let's go below and I'll turn the ship's papers over to you. Well, here's your quarters. How do you like him? Fine, fine. What's that for? Oh, just a little drink. Say, that's right. You never did care much for liquor, did you? No. Well, this is a special occasion, Jim. From now on, it's captain and mate. And when we're alone, it's Fred and Jim. <laughs> yes, sir. Of course. Well, here's to your first command. Uh, captain. Thank you, mate. Not bad stuff when you get used to it, huh? Well, maybe not. Now, this south to southeast course, this time of year, we're going to run into a lot of storms. So I think if we take the lane... <coughs> well, Gimpy, how do I look? Like a girl. Say, how would a sailor look putting flour on his nose? Stole that. boy on this ship. Got to have help with this extra big crew. What's the matter? You getting old? No, sir, but how do you expect me to feed you good grub without help? I'll bite how. What's your name? Her, uh, Herman Smaltz. What's the matter? Can he talk? Oh, yeah, but he's chewing the backer. 
Back to the galley with you. Aye, aye, sir. Keep your eye open on that mate. He's the snoopingest guy you ever saw. Duck back in the galley. I was just wondering when we're going to shove off, sir. Yeah, we're shoving off. Aye, aye, sir. I bought in China on the last trip, sir. That's... Here, Doyle! Here, Doll! Here, Bull! Here, Ball! Say! Kirk! Here! Ensign! Hello? Hold on, sir. What's your name? Burger, sir. Did you ever sail on the Dover? I did, sir. I got pipe out of here. All right, sir. Were you aboard when it was mutiny? I was, sir. Well, there won't be any mutiny aboard this ship. Aye, aye, sir. What's your name? Kirk, sir. Did you ever sail on the L&R? Aye, aye, sir. Five years under your father, sir. Very good. Now, you men are signed on to make the voyage to San Tino and return. You know your ship's orders, and I want you to keep them. You can either make this voyage a heaven or a hell. And I'm at home in both places. And don't forget it. Go forward. Aye, 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 sir. Pass off, Mr. Winston. Send a man to the wheel. Aye, aye sir. We up anchor with the tide and shape a course to Santino. This is an unhappy ship with a sullen crew, and the cargo is stowed in landlubber fashion. A slight list will shift it. I'll remedy that at sea. Meanwhile, if any galley suave aboard thinks I can't keep discipline with my hands, I'll curl his short hair for him. How many times have I got to tell you not to say yes, sir? In sailor lingo, it's I, I, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, sir. Got them onions done yet? Yes, sir. I, I, sir. You know, Miss Helen, someday you're going to be as good a cook as I be. I wonder. Thanks, Skimpy. But what worries me, I'm afraid I'll be recognized. Don't worry. In a couple of days, we'll be by our last port of call. Then you can shoot the works. That's just the trouble, Gimpy. If I'm found out beforehand, they'll put me off at Fair Haven. Well, stay out of sight for a couple of days. Only Jim and young Winthrop know who you are. Well, get busy in the galley. I gotta go down to the hold. Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Why are you there in the galley? Yes. Aye, aye, sir. Where's Gimby? He went to the storeroom. Pick up some sandwiches and jello for the old man and take him out. And make it snappy. Aye, aye, sir. The crew was largely wharf trash. It seems that thugs instead of tars were deliberately signed on. Course lies by the old Spanish main. Before long we'll sight Sea Turtle Island. Were it our destination, I'd say this crew could do for a raid ashore to lift Captain Kidd's buried loot. Tomorrow I'll see they are done with stowing the cargo. Though both first and second mates seem over anxious to relieve me of duty below decks. Come in. Mm 
the new cabin, boy? Aye. Aye, aye, sir. What's your name? Herman. Helen? Come in. You know, you don't make a very convincing boy. And I want you to change your other dress and get ready to leave the boat at Fair Haven. You're going back home. I'm not going back. Besides, Gimpy needs me. He says I'm a good helper. This ship is no place for a lady. And especially the future Mrs. Parker. But, Jim, I want to be with you. And I'm going to be. I'm not going to get off at Fair Haven. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. It's too bad they had to find Miss Helen so quick. That gal could show peel potatoes. Why, in another week, I'd have made her the best cook on the seven seas. And I know what I'm talking about, Alice. Skipper's going to examine the cargo sometime today. So tell Calvert to have the boys stand by in case. All right, get going. Okay. Up to this time, had you any reason to believe the Black Robe were unseaworthy? As suggested to you at the time by your first mate, Fred Winthrop? Why, he made no such suggestion. As far as the ship was concerned, it was perfectly seaworthy. Enough for ordinary seas. It was all but well built. And strong. And we'd passed inspection before we received our clearance papers. Captain Parker, up to this time, had you observed anything unusual aboard ship that would warrant your returning to port? Well, yes. After five days out, I, I had a feeling something was wrong. It was the attitude of the crew, their lack of discipline. How do you know on that rail? Get a hold of that rope. Take that pipe out of your mouth. Get up. Get a hold of that rope. Come on, let's get those ropes piled up there. Yeah, I'm sorry to ever shipped on this leaky hulk. The owner should be made to take her out himself. Yeah, him and that stuck-up son of his. Someday they're gonna have parrot soup on this ship. Yes, and I ain't gonna be here. 
You landlubbers, quit talking about your betters. Say, if I ever hear you making another crack about this ship, I'll put poison in your soup. Now beat it before I carve your liver. Yeah, forget it. We never saw the two doubles of that. Afraid of a leaky boat. Why, it would be a noble death for a sailor man to die in the raging water. But I don't like water, do I, Alan? Ironically, the loverly stowing of the cargo served a surprising purpose. What are you doing here? Ain't you supposed to be on watch? Sure I am, but Calvert told me to be here. Told us all to come up. Well, that's funny. He told me the same thing. I wonder what is up. Sit down. You'll find out. There's four sailors we can't count on. Then there's Gimpy the cook. But he don't matter. You follow me, my lead, and we'll all be in the cage. How about Winthrop's son? He's with us from stem to stern. I'm his mouthpiece. And then it's Jake with me. All right, do as I tell you. Keep your eyes peeled on me. Aye, aye, aye. Sir. for Santino. And I'm the captain and the ship is going back. Stand out for ye, half east. Half east, half east, sir. Well, Mr. Calvert. The crew won't refuse to turn back, sir. They want to keep on to Santino. Send your boys forward. I am, sir. They refuse. Go forward, boys. No. no. I'm for the captain, men. Oh, oh, hey, I'm Mr. Newton. Newton. Hope this ain't a private fight, Alice. 
because I'm getting in it. Jim's in irons. Young Winthrop's in charge of the ship. We're in port now.
put this life preserver on. I'll find a place for you in the boat. And hurry up. This boat's sinking fast. That's the last you remember. Yes, that's the last. I found myself on a sinking ship all alone, not knowing who I was or how I got there. The next thing I knew, I was washed overboard. I came in contact with a piece of broken mast and grabbed and held on. And then later, I, I felt the grit of sand under my feet and somebody pulling me ashore. And that was Peg. And from that time on, why, we were pals. Committed. What another storm or two. I love them. They don't disturb you? Let me feel your pulse. Put out your tongue. Just as I thought. Dante's Inferno. What you need, mate, is a drink of rum. Long and as cold as a well rope. All right. All right. Where's the doctor's prescription? Well, I, um, I... I, 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 I... Just as I thought. The old doctor drank his own prescription. Gonna <laughs> be a bad one, Jake. A bad one. It reminds me of that storm when I found you washed ashore on a broken mast. Storms make me restless. Stir up something on the inside of me. I have an urge. I like to be out in it. I love them. Oh. Something from the past. I can't remember. Oh, Peg, if I only knew who I was and where I came from. Take it easy, my lad. It'll all come back to you some of these days. Let's get off of this island. I've been here long enough. There you go again. We're no sooner in, you want to go some other place. A nice night for a pleasure tour. And no boat. Boat? Listen, Peg. You know that trader up the settlement? Well, he's got one for sale. It's a 60-footer in the rim. What do you say? Oh, he has, has he? And a fancy prize he's got, the old Shylock. What are we going to use for money? For the pearls. Why, he'd give his soul for them. Bet he would, the dirty neck creature. So you part for the pearls? Sure. Why not? What's the good of keeping them? There's plenty more where they came from. Ain't they beauties? Hmm. Very well. But nothing less than the boat and 500 pounds to boot. All right. I'll meet you later at El Marino's. Right, El. A 60-footer. <laughs> Thank you. 
That orchestra would play a good old American tune for a change. As long and cold as a well rope. <laughs> as long and cold as a well rope. <laughs> Say, Peg and I are shoving off with the tide. And tomorrow, we'll be far out in the Caribbean, headed for strange ports. New adventure on a 60 footer and trim. On a 60 footer and trim. <laughs> hey, I want to go home. Let's go to the States. If you go back to the States, they throw you in jail, Carney. If he goes back to the States, I'll throw him in jail. <laughs> if he goes back to the States, I'll throw him in jail. I want to go home. Sing this song. Okay, Carney. Hey, you play that good old American song. Which one? The only one you know. With the light brown hair Born like a vapor On the summer air I see her tripping Where the bright streams play Happy as the daisies That dance on her way Many are the wild notes Her merry voice would call Light that I dream of Jeannie with the light brown hair floating like a vapor on the soft summer. But her light won't stray Far from the fun hearts Round her native way Her smiles have vanished And her sweet songs flow Flitting like the dreams That have cheered us and gone Now the nodding wild flowers May wither on
away the drink and smoke, you never find for You never even want to go upon the honeymoon. That blow on my head brought back everything. Of course, I returned home as soon as possible. All sounds very plausible, Captain Parker. But you still have your first mate's testimony to confute. 
Have you any more evidence? Only the girl. Who is oh, Mrs. Parker. I... I'm sorry, Captain Parker. But we've heard your wife's testimony, and I'm afraid that... Well, her lack of knowledge concerning navigation disqualifies her as an expert witness. Most of the crew was lost at sea. Just a moment. I regret being late, Mr. Commissioner. I understand that you are absolving Captain Parker of all responsibility for the loss of my ship, Black Rover. No, indeed I'm not. Well, you should. I alone am to blame. My son and his crew conspired against Captain Parker in an effort to ship contraband cargo. My son is dead now, and I'm an old man, and my days are numbered. I'd like to make retribution to Captain Parker and his wife for the wrongs I've done them. I hope you can find forgiveness in your heart for a sorry old man. I have no chick or child. And I can think of no better way to make retribution than to place the Winfred line under your command. Mr. Winthrop, I... I don't know what to say. I... 